hit somebody with the ball. Good morning. We welcome you to worship this morning. Today, um, during our worship time together, we will recognize our graduates. We're very proud of them and certainly proud of their accomplishments. We know that God has uh, a lot more great things in store for each of you as you will enter into another phase of life. There was a lot of outdoor activity around the church this past week. Uh, Charles and I placed three loads, uh, truckloads of mulch around the fellowship building and the crepe myrtles. I guess the most time-consuming part of that job was trimming the crepe myrtles and then piling it up on a brush pile. Uh, we didn't get finished. We ran out of time and we ran out of mulch, if you can believe that. We had... That's a lot of mulch, but we probably need that much more, at least three more truckloads. And then the roofers came on Wednesday morning about 6.30. Um, I borrow moon contractors, roof contractors. They sent some 23 workers, and that counted the foreman. That's actually two crews that they have came. One crew worked on one side of the church and one crew worked on the other side of the church. Each person had a job to do. And I'm going to tell you, they got at it immediately when they arrived. Their first task, of course, was to sort of cover some things and then to remove the old shingles. And I guess they probably put a total of 16 workers on the roof at that point. Six or seven remained on the ground to do cleanup work and cover stuff and make sure nothing got damaged. They ended their day on Wednesday about 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, they had completely re-roofed the sanctuary and our Sunday school building. They were finished with that. The next day, then they came back at it, and this time they had fewer workers because they would be in a basket uh, on a lift that was going to try and um, work. They were going to work on the steeple and the front of the church. And also they were going to um, make some repairs on the shingles that were damaged over at the fellowship building. And while they were there with the crane and at the very top of the steeple, they went ahead and painted the uh, ornament that was there at, that's on top of the steeple. So it has been painted. They finished up on Thursday evening about 10 minutes after 9. We used all the lights that we could find. And if you remember, it started to rain that last hour or so from about 8 o'clock on, or maybe even quarter to 8. Um, it began to drizzle and rain. So they finished in the darkness. They finished in the rain. Um, but they are, I'm, I'm here to tell you, they're a wonderful company to work with, uh, very, very professional. 
we gathered and we prayed over the grass before they started work. Um, I'm not sure if they all understood what I said. Um, there were some Mexicans and they didn't speak very much English, but, um, but we prayed for protection uh, of heavy equipment and little footprints. Uh, I had been preparing the grass for the last several days, talking to it on Monday and Tuesday, uh, trying to prepare that this storm would come and it would go. We weather a lot of storms as human beings as well, and they come and they go. Since all the workers were here on Wednesday evening, uh, we fed them pizza and some hot wings and cookies and cake and so forth uh, as their supper meal because we knew that they would not all be back then on Thursday. So we thought we should honor those that were here and work so diligently for that day. The person representing uh, Ibarra Moon uh, Roofing Contractors is Chris Wall. And Chris is here today. Stand up, Chris. Um, Chris is here. He's no stranger to us. Um, Chris and his sister Paige were members of our youth group some years ago. Uh, they went with us on trips to the mountains. At that time, we had a youth basketball team of which Chris was a part of, and uh, his sister was a cheerleader. We had enough to have cheerleaders for the team at that point. Uh, Chris happened to pass by our church several months ago and noticed that we had some shingles that were missing on our Sunday school building, and that sort of got things started. And so today, uh, we're thankful to say we have a new roof over our heads. Chris, we want to thank you and your company for your dedication to certainly doing excellent work. Their motto is, or at least I think it's Chris's motto, the job is not complete until the customer is happy. It's a pretty good motto to have, Chris. His company will be replacing our gutters uh, along the sanctuary roofing on both sides with six-inch commercial guttering and also leaf guard protection and some new downspouts. That will occur on Thursday of this coming week, so that will take place then. Um, Chris, again, we thank you for what you have done for us and helping us get this uh, completed. And certainly feel free to worship with us at any time. Would you like to share anything with us? or? Thank you. Yep, thank you very much. Just give him a nice hand. Please check the Golden Age Banquet list. It's printed in the bulletin. If someone uh, needs to be added to that list, please let me know or my wife know. Also this week, uh, members of Meals on Wheels volunteers will be delivering in the East Rowan area, and we say thanks to you for doing that as well. Uh, please remember those on our prayer list. Jim Goodman, he had a CAT scan this past week. I believe that was on Tuesday, and he had his third cancer treatment this past week. On uh, uh, The CAT scan was on Tuesday, and the third treatment was on Thursday. Mike Wall, he's recovering, I guess uh, somewhat we might say slowly from some outpatient surgery that he had about two and a half weeks ago at Rowan Regional, and then the infe uh, an infection set in where the incision was, and they also discovered he had the flu. Cindy Helms, uh, she's having some serious back issues that, that may require surgery. And also, Bonnie Cornelius had cataract surgery that was held at Cabarrus Eye Center. I believe that was on Wednesday as well. Andy Cope, he had some tests at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center this past week. Uh, he and his family also spoke with doctors there, and they have a plan of attack for his esophagus cancer. Um, they will do some markings and some more tests this coming week and possibly begin treatments 
the following week. Now, he'll take those treatments at Lexington Hospital there at that area. Teresa Wise, who is a friend of Barbara Harwood, we added her to our prayer list, and she's been in the hospital most of this week, but I think came home on Friday or Saturday. This afternoon at 3 o'clock will be a memorial service held for Odessa Thompson at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. I will be assisting with that service. Her service was not held when she passed away because of COVID-related uh, issues, so it's going to be held this afternoon. Odessa, of course, was a good friend of my mother's and a good friend of our entire family. We were both charter members uh, of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church. Next Sunday, we will recognize Gideon Sunday, and we will recognize the work and ministry that they do. Uh, we have a guest speaker coming, and Billy Goodman and I will assist him in worship. Um, please come prepared to give a little extra for the work of the Gideons as, as we will be collecting a love offering after worship at the front doors. We appreciate their work and dedication by distributing God's word near and far. My message this morning in summary is God is the author of your story. If you get in agreement with him, then he will take you further than you could go on your own. Do we have any other, other announcements this morning? We will recognize our graduates, as I mentioned earlier, during our worship service this morning. Hearing no other announcements, um, this is an opportunity. We'll listen as Dominique Wyatt uh, plays the prelude. And of course, that's going to be entitled Pomp and Circumstance. And that is an opportunity as she plays that prelude for us to pray and meditate as worship begins. Uh, again, we welcome you to worship this morning on Graduate Sunday.
Our Old Testament lesson begins with Psalm 139, verses 13 through 16. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in utter seclusion. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. And from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Our epistle lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our gospel lesson comes from the fifth chapter of Mark, verses 21 through 34. And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and besought him, saying, My little daughter. And he went with him, and a great crowd followed and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a flow of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I shall be made well. And immediately the hemorrhage ceased, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone forth from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. 
Here ends the reading of our lessons. We are gathered together to celebrate the accomplishments of all our recent graduates among us. We give blessings to them for all that they have achieved and for the many more accomplishments yet to come. One part of their life's journey is complete. They will prepare to begin another phase that will take them to unimaginable places. We give them blessings of goodwill and love as they journey forth into the next phase of their education. Just as Jesus commissioned the disciples to go out and spread his word with the world, so do we commission them to do the same through their lives. Always keep Christ in your hearts. Strive for only the best rewards that life has to offer you and may the love of Christ shine through you. Christ is the light of all people. Let him shine in all our lives during these easy times and tough times. And keep us mindful to always keep that light alive. Let Christ's light shine always. Thanks be to God. At this time, we want to recognize our graduates, and we're going to begin with uh, those graduates that we might have from preschool, kindergarten, elementary school, those who have completed uh, the fifth grade or so. Do we have any of those uh, students, uh, children here with us this morning? Daryl Rich, I know, is one. Daryl, would you come up, maybe with your mother? Who else do we have? Anyone else? Yeah, we have Addie Nance. So we have two. Addie, I guess, is a preschool graduate, and Daryl Rich is a kindergarten graduate. And my wife is going to present you with a little something, a little gift. And here's a sunshine necklace that we need. And it's because you need to let your light shine brightly. Okay? I don't think it's on you. And if, if the principal uses a binder right now, but want you to wear that, that's okay. You know. <laughs> Okay, and Daryl, how was kindergarten? Was it good? Just good? It's either, it's either awful or fantastic. Okay. Um, here you go. I've got you a medallion, a sunshine necklace, so you can let your light shine on. Okay. So you're just beginning. And Mama Jody, I want you to put those on. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Let's give them a hand. Thank you. I'm not sure, but I don't think we have any middle school graduates, do we? Do we have any middle school graduates here today? Didn't think so. Wasn't sure about that. We want to now call our high school graduate, um, who is Callie Trexler, to come forward, and two college graduates, Jason Nance, um, and also Taylor Trexler, if you would come forward and take a seat up here among these chairs, if you would. Pass that to Jason first. I'm going to start with Jason. Um,
Let me begin by saying that we are so proud of each and every one of you for your accomplishments, uh, college and high school. Uh, we know it took a lot of dedication and sacrifice, um, and certainly um, times when you thought maybe you couldn't finish, um, we certainly offered prayers, and we offered prayers with your prayers to give you that encouragement and that incentive to continue on. Jason Nance um, graduated from Rowan Cabarrus Community College, and he graduated there with an electrical systems engineering technology degree. Um, Jason's family is certainly very proud of him as many moons ago, uh, he sort of lost funding and couldn't afford uh, to continue into his junior year. Uh, he went into the workforce and he didn't look back. Um, in 2017, uh, he decided to work toward his associate degree while working, public work, and, and with a lot of little ones at home. So he had a lot of responsibilities, and I'm sure there were times when he thought he just didn't have the time to finish his schooling, times uh, even when he was too sick um, and he was diagnosed with heart failure. So school we know is harder when you're not fresh out of high school, when you wait a while and go back, it's difficult. Even though there were times, uh, Jason, I'm sure when you wanted to give up, you didn't. And that's the important thing we certainly want to honor you with today, your determination. You, you set a goal, and you were determined to make that goal complete. Things that you'd like to share with us, maybe that was meaningful as you went to um, school there at Rowan Cabarrus Community College, what was meaningful about that as you made your way through those tough years somewhat? Just the relationships you develop uh, among your loved ones and the other students in class, you really have to be there for other people as well as count on them at times when stuff's hard and you're struggling. There's always someone there for you, rather it be in your family or in right. class. So I've really learned to count on other people. Yeah, the, the, I think the friendships and relationships that you make there are, are, are really meaningful to you. and. And I hope you'll find uh, and, and stay in contact with some of those people as you continue uh, your life journey. Um, what do you plan to do with your degree from Rowan Cabarrus? Um, I'm looking for employment right now, but there's a company in Mooresville that I'm looking at mainly uh, trying to be a trainer for their international machines. People come in from all overseas and they need to be trained at it do maintenance and set up and wiring of these uh, machines. Good. Very nice. Our prayers go with you. God bless you for what you've already accomplished and what you plan to do in the future. Thank you. I know you'll achieve that. If you'll pass the mic on to Taylor, she is a graduate of Pfeiffer University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Administration. Uh, Taylor accomplished her degree by taking her classes uh, a lot of them online. Uh, she did this again while holding down a full-time job as a dental assistant at Merle Family Dentistry in Landis for the past four years. Uh, with her degree, she has been promoted to the insurance coordinator. Taylor, what do you want to share with us about uh, what was important in in accomplishing this degree for you? Well, like you said, I, mean, I didn't really get to have the relationships because I did it all online. And my brother's been waiting for this one, so <laughs> I have to thank him. He helped me through the end of my history class. <laughs> but my family and friends just supporting me and helping me through everything Good. and pushing me Good. to do it. So, yes. Very nice. We're very proud of you for, for having that extra push to get it completed and get it done. And I know it will help you in your, uh, in your profession in years to come. Callie Traxler, if you'll pass the microphone on to her, uh, she will soon be a graduate of Carson High School. 
Um, Callie, throughout her years in school, has been very active here in the church. Um, she has been president of our youth group and a leader in many of our projects that we take on. She has also excelled in high school, um, an honor student, cheerleading captain, played um, soccer on the soccer team and also on the track team. I think she's a soccer referee. Uh, most recently, in October of 2021, she was selected as the Carson High School homecoming court. Um, Callie, if you remember, um, your church family and your pastor predicted a week before yes. that that you would be crowned as homecoming queen during that, um, I believe it was October 1st, yeah. on a Friday evening football game. We, uh, we just had that feeling and that word from God that you were very deserving and uh, uh, of that to be bestowed upon you. I think... I thank your fellow classmates um, and the student body there at Carson High School realized and recognized you as being someone that is trustworthy and friendly and dedicated, and you're always willing to help uh, no matter what the project is or what the person needs or whoever the person is that needs help. So this past year, 2021, at the end of the year, you were able to ride in two parades, um, two Mustang convertibles. Um, she rode in the Salisbury Spencer Christmas Parade, and then she also rode in the Landis Chiny Grove Parade um, to represent uh, being homecoming queen. You have received a number of scholarships, and we listed those in the bulletin. She plans to attend UNC at Charlotte. Um, she, I'll just name a few, the Golden Leaf, the North Carolina State Firefighters uh, Scholarship, Rockwell Amvets, Ladies Auxiliary, Rotary Club of China Grove, Faith Civitan, Mount Zion, United Church of Christ, the Edwin E. Morgan Memorial Scholarship, and then you also received several from the universe, uh, from UNC at Charlotte, uh, from the college itself. Most recently, last week at Carson, she received two awards. Her Spanish three teacher bestowed her with the World Language Award for Spanish, and that earned her uh, a gold sobrero. Her dance teacher inducted her into the National Honor Society of Dance Arts. Um, Sally, we're very proud of your uh, accomplishments at school and as well as here at church. Uh, I just want to close by saying that, uh, Callie, you're comfortable whether you're wearing boots and camouflage clothing and carrying a gun She's just as comfortable dressed like that as she would be wearing an evening gown and high heel shoes. Uh, so I guess what I'm saying is that you're very versatile and you adapt well to whatever that situation may be. So we know you'll do well in college. You've done very well in high school and we look forward to seeing um, what accomplishments you will uh, endure and take on in your years ahead. What was meaningful to you at, uh, at Carson? She also met somebody, number 32. Um, who is number 32? Is Austin Cook here today? I see Austin Cook. Stand up, Austin Cook. This is her boyfriend. She uh, met him at Carson as well. And uh, it is 32, isn't it? 35. Oh, why did I get that wrong? Uh, some other player. Oh, no, uh, that didn't come. No, no, I'm not getting in that squabble. That didn't come from Cali. I just, that was my memory fault. Number 35. We're proud of you too. He was also, um, Austin was also on the homecoming court as well. Um, did not win, but um, was certainly there 
um, for Cali as well. So congratulations to both of you. What did you find most meaningful at Carson? Yeah. Um, being able to be involved in everything and meeting all my new friends, especially coming from Irwin into a school where I didn't really know anybody. And then this past week we did the um, like middle school and elementary school walkthroughs and I was able to go with my friends from East. Miss oh. German let me ride the bus and I could I was able to walk through we went through Rockwell and Morgan and Irwin. Wonderful. Very nice. Okay. Let's give all of these folks a nice hand for their accomplishments. I'm going to invite Vicki Goodman if she'll come forward, and uh, Callie, if you'll hand her the microphone, she has a scholarship presentation to make. Callie has um, applied, and we have approved her for a scholarship of $1,000, and we will send that to UNC Charlotte. I was going to talk about you hunting and wearing beautiful gowns, too, but he took that away from me. Congratulations, Callie. And my wife has some gifts that she wishes to present to you. I just want to tell y'all that I'm going to get more cords than this. I've done more than this, but they won't give them to me until the day before. So tell us, tell us what those cords mean. Some people may not know why you're wearing those and what they represent. These two are the National Dance Honor Society that the dance teacher inducted me into. And then this one's for my junior Civitan club at school. And what other chords will you be receiving? I don't know. Oh, you don't know I yet? I should get okay. one from National Honor Society. There's a lot. I don't really know what they mean, but wow. we'll see. Wow. There's the gold sabrera. Yeah. There's the gold sabrera. Yeah. I really am coveting this. Uh. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like for um, the family members of Jason to stand up, please. I don't know, they're tucked away somewhere. There they are. All family members, Jason. Let's give them a hand. I'm going to talk mostly to Alicia. Alicia, Pastor Sheeks was in seminary, and we got married when he was on internship. I know Jason could not do what he did without a spouse's support. And probably even helped with exams and that kind of thing too, right, Jason? Of course, he's he's so tech savvy. Nathan, you got competition. <laughs> okay, and the family members of Taylor, stand up, please. Let's give them a hand. And Evan, I know you've been right back there by her side all the time. And some of these are still the same. The family members of Callie Traxler, stand up, please. Thank you. And Callie, I know Austin Ever there's been a great support too. Okay, I have some things for you. Um, First of all, uh, Dominique, would you like to come be teacher's pet? Let the teacher do it. Okay. First of all, we have some lanyards for you, and I'm going to let you go ahead and present them. <laughs> and we have some, um, go ahead and give them, we have sunshine medallions for you too. Okay. Because, um, some of you are in the work world. Some of you are going on to the university world. And no matter what, it's hard to rise and shine, especially for 8 o'clock classes. And let's make them wear grad glasses, too. And, Dominique, I'm going to let you be Vanna White. And just get some things out of the bag so they can see. Okay. Each of you has a photo cube 
which is a also a secret compartment for you to put anything that you might desire. And I'm going to let you open this. Murtis Trexler has created for each of you. So this is Taylor's. It's a mug that says, congrats, Taylor, your future awaits you 2022. And it has the picture of the church on it, too. And if you'll notice the bag itself, not just because the Trexlers are in the chicken business, but we have a chicken on the front that says, I may rise, but I refuse to shine. So anyway, um, each of you have a mug. You also have some wrap gifts, and those are actually books. And Taylor and Callie, I'm gonna let you open these. You each have a blanket in here. <clears throat> Can y'all read what it says? It says, every day God, God thinks, thinks of you. you. And that's from Psalm 139. Every hour, God looks after you, and that's from 2 Thessalonians. Every minute, God cares for you, from 1 Peter. And let's see, what does that one say? Um, because every second, he loves you, from Jeremiah 31. So these are for you, and you're going to need lots of wrapping around in the workforce or at college. And then um, I know this one should be Jason's, hopefully, so I'll let you give that to him. And Callie, I found something special that I started to bring for awards day the other day, but I'm going to let you hold this up. I found this at Russell's thrift shop uptown. I'm his number one customer. Do you know what this is? It's a prison jumpsuit. It's not a prison jumpsuit. <laughs> School has been likened to that before, but you see this? And it, it does. <laughs> what I said, Andy. Do you see this? You see that? Well, actually, the first class at Carson High School had all orange and there's a picture somewhere they graduated in the auditorium and there's a picture of them walking from the gym to the auditorium between the two things. And I thought maybe you would like to take this back to the school at Carson because I think they might need to display this in a cabinet somewhere because it was the first graduation and I can't believe somebody parted with that. But Russell gets his things out of the storage buildings. And so I thought maybe you would like to dedicate that to your school. And maybe cousins Amy and Josh might want to help you. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I thought that was special because I think that's the only time that Carson's had all orange. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Did you have a prayer? Let's close with our prayer. All wise and all loving God, we thank you for all your gifts to us, for making us, for saving us in Christ, for calling us to be your people. Look with love on our graduates and bless them as they complete their years of education. May your spirit give them many skills and talents and help them to use these gifts for your glory and for the good of all people. In your kindness, guide them along the paths that are level and smooth. We ask these blessings through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like for Taylor to take her mortar board off. Would you like to show that too, please? It's on the front of your bulletin. Callie painted that for her graduation. Very nice. Very nice. Same. Where God guides, he provides. So, Very nice. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You'll get a chance to speak with them. Graduates, we'd like to have you make your way to the back of the church as worship concludes today so the congregation can get a chance to speak with you personally.
Our next hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth. children to come forward now for the children's sermon. Good morning. This morning is a special day in that we recognize those graduates that have already graduated and some that will graduate within the next week or so. Um, and we just recognize three that were very special to us. Jason's right here in front of me was one of them from college. We had two from college and one from high school. I have, in fact, some pictures of them. I want you to turn and look at the screen and see if you can identify them. Who do you think that might be? Who's the pastor in the middle? Who might that be? I had black hair back then. Okay, maybe go to the next. Huh? No, not yet. It's going to be different. Is the next one going to be different, Nathan? Okay. This looks like, who you think? Take a guess. Of the three that we had up here, we had Callie, Taylor, and Jason. Taylor. Taylor. 
Okay. Are we right? Which one? Oh, you said that's Taylor? Uh, so this is three different people. I'm confused myself. Yes, three different people. Oh, I thought all three of them was the same person. No? Okay. So the one in the middle is Taylor. Is that correct? No. No. Callie. The one on the far right is Taylor. And Jason is on the left. Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> So let's try the next set of slides now that I know how we play the game. So these are going to be all mixed up, right? Uh, oh, these are all the same. Oh, this is like playing football, isn't it? We're going to change the rules while we play. I like those games. I like that. Okay, who does that look like? Taylor? That looks like Taylor Trexler to me. Is that, are we correct, Nathan? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next set. Okay. That's Callie. Absolutely. We can tell that. So you can see these pictures are younger pictures of these graduates. And they are, we're thankful they had the ability to grow and what a wonderful gift. Uh, that has been, I'm sure, for parents and grandparents to see them uh, grow and get older and wiser and share their talents that God has given them. Uh, can you imagine how dull it would be if we never grew? Can you imagine that? Always stayed the same. A lot of, um, certainly our youth have grown over the years and gone out into the work world as well as finish college and education and um, certainly have, has matured over the years. We got more, Nathan? Yep. yep. Okay. <laughs> that looks like Jason to me. Jason Nance. Now, what are you wearing here? Is that what, what outfit is this on the third picture on the bottom, Jason? Is that a wrestling suit uh, uniform from East Rowan. Okay. How many years did you participate in that? Oh, all four years, he says. Oh, wow. Wow. Looks like a birthday party up above there, and he's climbing a tree. And what grade would you have been in the far right? Is that a first? First grade picture. Okay. How about any more? Do we have more? Nope. nope that's all. Okay, very good. Um, so when springtime comes, which it is now, uh, we think about graduations from all the different uh, universities and colleges and things. And so we again congratulate your church family is very proud of all of you. Uh, and we just want you to know that uh, we love you and we are here for you, even though you've graduated with some degree. Um, don't ever feel like that you're alone in any uh, accomplishment that you achieve. We are always there for you. Uh, and we want you to remember that underneath everything in life, um, you're always God's beloved child. God loves you. Jesus walks beside of you. And you're part of that eternal circle that God has planned for each and every one of us. Let us close with our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to join us in this most important part uh, of honoring our recent graduates. Give them your grace as they finally accept uh, a precious diploma in their hands. And may they carry all the teachings and learnings from their professors and teachers. May they cherish the relationships that they have made over the years from their classmates and friends. Bless them as they move on to the next phase in their journey of life. May they always turn to you, O oh Lord, for guidance and direction. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, 
think Kim has something she's going to bring to you I'm from. Trying to do this age appropriate. Can we get the lights, Judy? She not there. Debbie, somebody. I want to talk with you this morning about tell yourself a new story. We all have a story of how, of how we see ourselves, how we see our future, and it comes from how we were raised, what people have said, our successes and our failures. For some people, their story is negative. I've been hurt too much. I didn't get the scholarships that I deserved. Uh, my family is at a disadvantage. I'll never be successful. I have big dreams, but I don't have the talent, the experience. You know what's stopping you if you think like that? It's your story. You're being limited by what you're telling yourself, what you believe about yourself, how you see your circumstances, the story that you've written will override what everyone else says. It's even more powerful than the facts. You can be incredibly gifted. You can have a great personality, but if you tell yourself that you're average, that you don't have much to offer, that your gifts won't come out like they should, is the story you're telling yourself keeping you from rising higher in life. Why don't you tell yourself a new story? The scripture says God is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the author. And Psalm 139 says all of your days were written before you were born. God has already written your story. The key to get your story is to get it in line with his story. God says he plans for you are always good. His plans for you are good, to give you a future and a hope. He calls you, in fact, a masterpiece, valuable, victorious, an overcomer. He said what was meant for harm, he's turning to your advantage. You may have been through bad breaks. Things may not always be fair in your life. And the enemy would love to author that story of yours. He would love to rewrite what God has said about you. But you need to take that pen back and you need to cross out all those lies that the enemy Satan throws at you and tell yourself a new story. God says he has beauty for where there are ashes and he will pay you back for the wrongs. You wouldn't be alive unless he had something awesome in front of you. 
Don't let circumstances, uh, well, what didn't work out or, or what you don't think you have, don't let those things convince you uh, of the way you should live. That's the wrong story. Your story is setting limits for your life. So quit telling yourself that you'll, oh, I'll never be successful, I'll never get out of debt, or I'll never meet the right person. Tell yourself a new story. I'm made in the image of God. Uh, remember you're crowned with favor. You're a masterpiece. Those are things that God says about you. And that is the greatness in each and every one of us. Whatever I touch prospers and succeeds. Blessings are chasing me down. That's the story you want to tell yourself. The latter days will be better than my former days. That's the story that God has written about you. So is your story contradicting what God says? You can't let people um, and circumstances and doubt and negativity, don't let those things rewrite your story. Don't let someone else become the author. Take that pen and tell yourself a new story. Let God be the author of your story. And when you get your story in line with what God says, things will happen that you couldn't make happen. Don't let the wrong story um, keep you from your greatness. Could it be that a wrong story is keeping you from rising higher? Oh, you might say, I can't make all A's in school. I'm not that smart. All I can make are C's. I'll never accomplish my dream. It's too late in life. You have to realize that the enemy has taken that pen and is trying to rewrite your story. Don't let it happen. Don't let Satan take that pen. God didn't create you just to get by, just to survive life but he created you to excel, to leave your mark. He said that you are to reign in life, meaning that victory starts in our mind. The scripture says, be careful how you think because your thoughts run your life. Your story is setting the limits of your life. God came to Moses after he had been living in the desert for 40 years, and he said, Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses looked back at God and said, God said, I can't, I can't stand before Pharaoh. I stutter. I have a problem in my speech. You know I can't speak well. And God said, Moses, who made your tongue? Moses, who made your mouth? Do you think God would ask you to do something and then not give you the ability to do it? Do you think he would choose you here at this particular time in history and not give you everything you need to live a victorious life, to overcome obstacles, to leave your family better than they were before? What was Moses' problem? He had the wrong story. He was telling himself, oh, I'm unqualified, I'm at a disadvantage, I have these limitations. The story you believe is a story that's going to come to pass. When you tell God that you can't do something, uh, God, I, I can't get well, you saw the report, I can't start my business, I, I'm not that talented, or I can't do something significant. I come from the wrong family. God says to you what he said to Moses. Who made you? Who wrote your story? Who gave you your gifts? Who picked you out of your family? Who lined you up for good breaks? Who planned out your days? That was the creator of the universe. The God who spoke 
worlds and galaxies into existence. He is your author. He has written your story. You're not going to live this life on your own, but you need to go back to what he says about you. Go back to what God says about your life. I think it's interesting that little children will start off with big dreams. Oh, if you ask them, they'll say, I'm going to be an astronaut, an architect, or a specialist, or a, a scientist, or maybe a singer, a model. Several weeks ago, I asked a little boy um, what he was going to be, and he told me he wanted to design airplanes, that he knew everything about aircraft. As a child, we have no limits. We believe we can do great things, but over a period of time, our dreams start to get watered down. People tell us we can't do that. Oh, you can't do that. You don't know anything about airplanes. You can't do that. So we go through disappointments, things we realize that are not fair, and life then begins to rewrite our story. We let the negative taint how we see ourselves and what we're capable of. We end up settling far much less in life than God created us to do and be. Pay attention to the story that you're telling yourself. Go back to what God has, has literally put in your heart. He wants you to dream again, to believe again, and to love again. Don't let a wrong story limit your destiny. Don't believe that lie that says, just like this with the sickness and the depression, oh, I'll never get well. I'll never go to college. I'll never have a good paying job. I'll never earn that degree. Just let me make it through life. That's not your story. Tell yourself a new story. Lord, thank you that my cup runs over, that I live under the open windows of heaven, that you take pleasure in prospering me. I read about this bear, and he lived in a 12-foot by 12-foot cage all of his life since he was a little cub. And during the day, he would pace back and forth, back and forth hours at a time, and one day, the bear was discovered by his authorities. And they made arrangements for him to be taken to a zoo. Now, this zoo was a, a large area. It had big pools of water. Uh, it had rocks there that the bear could climb on. It had beautiful green grass everywhere you look. It was like a dream setting. So they transported the bear, opened the cage, and the people standing around were so excited but the bear couldn't get out of the cage. He wouldn't get out of the cage. They had to push him into the green grass, and they thought eventually that he would take off running and exploring the new surroundings, but all the bear did was walk in a 12-foot square. 12-foot square. He never went to the pool he never climbed on the rocks. He never played with the other bears. He got out of the cage, but the cage never got out of him. His story was, I'm stuck. I'm limited. I can't go any further in life other than this 12-foot square. That was his story. When the truth is, he had the whole field to play in. The story you tell yourself is very powerful. How we were raised, how we were, what we saw modeled in our family, the environment that we're in, and, and all of that can create boundaries in our mind where we adapt to what's around us. The story you tell yourself 
is a story that's going to come to pass. My encouragement to you is that the cage is open. The cage is open and God has a big life for you, favor and opportunities, great relationships. Get in agreement with God and tell yourself a new story. You don't have to figure out how it's going to happen. All you have to do is believe. In Mark chapter 5 that we read, it was our last lesson that we read this morning, there was a lady there who had been sick for 12 years. She had gone to some of the best doctors, spent all of her money, but nothing had helped. And the story was that she was telling herself was, this sickness that I have is permanent. There's nothing else I can do. It's just bad luck. So she continued to go downhill. But one day she heard Jesus was going to be passing through her town. Despite how she felt, despite the circumstances, she told herself a new story. She said, when I touch the edge of his robe, I'm going to be healed. Scripture says she kept telling, saying that to herself, I'm going to get well. Healing is coming. Things are about to change. So she deleted her old story and started telling herself a new story. Faith began to rise in her heart. As she kept saying, healing is coming, she began to make her way through the crowd. And when she touched his robe, instantly she was healed. And like this lady, you may have good reason to have a negative story. You may have good reasons for that. Maybe you're facing a challenge with your health, your finances, your job, your school, whatever it might be. It's easy to get defeated thoughts. I can't do it thoughts. Or it's never going to work out thoughts. All of those negative thoughts play into your mind. And that's when you have to do like this lady. You have to do like her and dig deep down and say, no, I'm deleting this story. I'm deleting this negative story. I will be the exception. I will get well. I will see my family restored. I will get a job after I graduate from college. I will break this addiction. I will accomplish my dream." There was an experiment done in high school in California. The principal told three teachers, since they were the most effective teachers in the district, and they had the highest ratings that they were going to be chosen for this new program. Out of thousands of students, they were going to take the top 90 students, the smartest, the most talented, with the highest IQ, and they were going to put them in a class with these three teachers. Uh, they could teach them at a faster pace. The teachers and the students were so excited knowing that they were the brightest in the school. At the end of the school year, these three classes had learned 30% more than the other students. They were 30% further along in math and reading and in science. It was a huge success. And then the principal informed the teachers that they didn't have the top 90 students in the district, that they had simply randomly chosen those students. Teachers felt really good about themselves, thinking, well, they were so smart that they had done, done such an awesome job. But then the principal informed the teachers that they weren't the most effective teachers. They were randomly chosen out of a hat. The point is, when you tell yourself a different story, when you tell yourself that you're made in the image of God, that you're smart, you're talented, you're favored, you're wise, 
you're going to see new levels of your destiny. Graduates, we have great confidence in you. We see you the way that God sees you. You're anointed, you're favored, you're blessed. The story you need to tell yourself is, God breathed his life into me. I'm a masterpiece. I have something great to offer to this world to make it a better place. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we celebrate with our graduates this day. It is a moving up day, and we ask your blessings upon those graduates for reaching this significant point in their lives. We thank you, God, for their loving and supporting parents, dedicated teachers who worked hand in hand to enable them to reach this accomplishment. Lord, you always guide and protect us in every endeavor, and even in the struggles that we encounter, we can always count on you to be there to give us guidance and direction. Lord, we invite you to be the author of our new story, a story that is in line with your story for us. Help us all to dream big so that we can make a positive influence in the world in which we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we uplift to you as being the great physician, those that are on our prayer list, and we ask that your healing touch and care would be with each and every one of them. We uplift to you Mike Wall, who's recovering from surgery, uh, still dealing with some issues of the flu and an infection in his incision. And we pray, too, for Andy Cope, who was diagnosed two or three weeks ago with some cancer issues. We ask and pray that you will be near him as he continues to meet with cancer doctors, and soon they will begin treatment, radiation and chemotherapy. We acknowledge you, Lord, as a great physician, so we ask that your healing hand would rest upon him, give him encouragement and strength. We pray for Jim Goodman, who had his third cancer treatment this past Thursday of this week. We pray that you will help be with him to help him regain strength and energy day by day. Cindy Helms, who is experiencing uh, back pain and problems, help to ease her pain and Discomfort, we uplift you, Bonnie Cornelius, who had cataract surgery this past week. Lord, there are many on our list. Dennis Ingold, recovering from back surgery. Alan Curley, uh, who is uh, battling leukemia. John Foster, recovering from eye surgery. Don Vick, as he recovers from, from a fall and surgery on his hip. Tony Beringer, recovering from surgery and also Teresa Wise, a friend of Barbara Harwood's who has been in the hospital for a week or so. Lord, we uplift these and many others uh, into our prayers this morning. Don and Stella Stywalt, Gabby Trexford, Carl Cope, Joel McDonald, Chris Morgan, Francis Meisenhammer, Joe Hartsoe, Marvin and Sheila Dry, Mickey and Nancy Holsauser, Brenda Rummage, Lynn Myers, James Beringer, Sue Eller, Christy Hales, Kelly Cole, Ann Tucker, Paula Lewis, Gwen Goodman, Mary Vaughn, Walt and Gloria Stiller, Stephen Donna Michaels, Rhonda Stywalt Roseman, Shanna Matlock, Kynard Cheeks, and Jean Bonds. For these and others, we uplift to you for your healing power to rest upon them. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord, who am I to teach the way to little children day by day, so prone myself to go astray? I teach them knowledge, but I know how faint they flicker and how low the candles of my knowledge glows. I teach them love for all mankind and all God's creations, uh, but I find my love comes lagging far behind. Lord, if their guide, I will still must be. Oh, let the little children see the teacher leaning hard on thee. 